Hello everyone, my name is Antonio and I am an optometrist. In this video, we'll be talking about whether colorblind individuals see traffic lights differently. Before I studied optometry, I always thought that people with color vision defects could not see color at all. I would go up to them and ask things like, what color do you see here? Or how do you know when to stop at a traffic light? So to clear up any confusion that you may also have, the topics we will cover today are what is the difference between color blindness and color deficiency? Will color deficient individuals have a hard time knowing when to stop at a traffic light? Are there any occupations that color deficient individuals are not allowed to have? And will special glasses like Enchroma cure color blindness? You may have come across people who suffer from color vision problems yourself. In fact, it is believed that 8% of men and 0.5% of women in the Caucasian population are color deficient. However, it's crucial that we learn to distinguish between color blindness to color deficiency, as they are not the same. Complete color blindness, aka achromatopsia, refers to when a person has no color perception at all. In other words, no cone receptors in their retina. But what is worse is that these individuals generally have poor eyesight, severe light sensitivity, and may also present with nystagmus, which is an uncontrollable eye movement. Achromatopsia is believed to be very rare, affecting less than 1 in 30,000 people. Color deficiencies on the other hand are a lot more common. In fact, 1 in every 12 men you come across will have some form of color deficiency. These deficiencies are usually diagnosed in a routine eye exam, the most common test being the Ishihara number plates. Unlike achromatopsia, color deficient individuals still have cone receptors, but they may either be missing or slightly altered. This makes the differentiation between similar hues of colors difficult. I recently came across a meme that made me think of color deficiency. The two nails are of different color, but for somebody with a color vision defect, the colors may seem so similar that it becomes really difficult to tell between the two. The way that color is affected amongst deficient individuals is that there is more confusion between similar hues. I'll show you what I mean. Take for example the D15 color vision test. This test is designed to diagnose the type of color deficiency you may have. The instructions are simple. Line the colors up in order by placing the most similar color next to each other. For someone with normal color vision, the result may look like this, where the blocks form a nice gradient from blue on the left to purple on the right. Let's see how a person with a red-green color deficiency would perform on this test. You may be sitting there thinking, how on earth does this block belong here? Well, let's put on a color deficiency simulator to experience how this is all possible. Over here I've put the perception of someone who has a red color deficiency. You can see that the red has been removed from the purple, therefore making it more difficult to distinguish between the blue and the violet. And over on this side, we have the perception of someone who has a green color deficiency. Having a deficiency doesn't necessarily mean you can't see the colors because quite evidently there are colors here, but it's the differentiation of similar colors that becomes really confusing. Let's take this gradient for example. Over on the left we see a blend of colors that range from red to green. If this is what a person without a red-green color deficiency sees, over on this side I've put the same image but seen from a color deficient person's point of view. How will this impact their ability on an eye exam? The most common form of color vision testing is the Ishihara number plates. The colors used in this test are carefully chosen to make it really difficult for color deficient individuals. For someone without a color vision problem, this is an easy task. The number 7 formed by the green dots stands out amongst the red and orange background. But if we simulate a red color deficient person's point of view, the task becomes much more difficult. I've always found color vision testing to be quite fascinating. The fact that the colors I see are completely different to the colors that someone else sees is still mind-boggling to this day. Now that we know how color vision is affected by a deficiency, it begs the question, 
How will it impact an individual's ability to detect traffic lights? After all, traffic lights are made up of a mixture of red, yellow and green. Running the simulator on the picture shows that a weak form of either red or green deficiencies do not severely impact the ability to know which light is on. The colours on the traffic light are different enough that despite having a colour deficiency, there is no confusion as to which colour you are looking at. Also, knowing that red is always at the top and green is always at the bottom will minimise that confusion even more. But what if the colour deficiency was really bad? After all, colour vision exists on a spectrum where someone could have a mild case of colour deficiency while another could have a really severe case of colour deficiency. One of the most severe cases is called dichromacy where instead of having three different types of cones that give us information about red, green and blue hues, there are only two different types of cones, therefore making the differentiation between red and green almost impossible. Dichromacy is extremely rare and is believed to affect about 2% of males in various European populations. So to answer the question, will colorblind people see traffic lights differently? I would have to answer yes but not to the point where it would impact the ability to drive because, as we saw earlier, mild cases of colour deficiency don't induce much confusion. However, there are still some occupations that require a high level of colour discrimination and therefore make colour deficient individuals not suited for certain tasks. Every country has different vision standards, so just because I say it here doesn't mean that it will fully apply to where you are living. But these jobs include policemen, pilots, electricians, heavy vehicle drivers, and mariners. An occupation like an electrician makes perfect sense, especially for someone with a severe deficiency. How would you know which wire to use if the wires were coloured red, yellow, and green? And an occupation like a naval officer would also need colour discrimination as boats use a combination of red and green lights to signal their orientation. Pilots are also required to have good colour vision, but depending on the severity of their deficiency, they may hold a conditional licence, where they can only fly under certain conditions, such as during broad daylight. But is there a workaround for such deficiencies? Surely there's something out there that can help, right? What about those special sunglasses that we see online of people wearing them and they see colours for the first time? You see them break down in tears because they have never seen such beautiful colours before. As someone who has studied vision science and sees patients with colour vision problems, I really wish these claims were true. I would love for people to experience normal trichromacy and for them to have equal opportunity with employment. But the sad reality is that these glasses don't cure colour blindness. I would love to explain in every little detail about how spectral sensitivities of cone photoreceptors create confusion when there's too much overlap due to the ratios of the output responses seeming too similar to the combination of hue and luminance channels. But that would bore the heck out of you, and if you really wanted, you could check out my other video on those topics here. But to simplify how colorblind glasses work, they filter out the wavelengths that are known to create the most confusion, so the differentiation between red and green may be more evident. However, this is a subtractive method, so it doesn't cure colour blindness, because it doesn't add any extra information to the vision. Not only that, because there are multiple types of colour blindness with varying severities, you could even pick up a pair that may not be suited for the type of deficiency you may have. They may allow you to see colours differently, like slapping on a filter on Instagram, and perhaps allow the differentiation of certain colours to be easier, but it doesn't help you perform any better on a colour vision test, and the reality is that people with normal colour vision would see the world just as differently with these glasses on. If you guys want me to do a separate video outlining the details of how colourblind glasses work, then please let me know in the comments below. But that just about wraps up today's video. If you learned something new, or at least found something useful, then yay, thumbs up to you. If you want to thumbs up back, then they'll be greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.